Hey Summoners, how's it going? My name is Nathan Ng and I'll be your host for this video. If you're unfamiliar with our Korean build series, we cover the latest trending builds. The majority of the builds come directly from the Korean solo queue, but we do our best to include any recently popularized builds. That said, this is the first one for Season 12 and I'm really excited to give you guys a rundown on them. Make sure to hit that subscribe button and let's get this video started. To begin the video, we'll start with the top lane. Season 12 has brought with it a variety of new runes and items to utilize. There's an argument that Victor is viable again because of a single rune, First Strike. This new keystone provides players with a brief window to deal bonus damage and also gain gold based on the bonus damage dealt. Victor's damage comes quickly, and obviously that's not always a great thing. It's great when it comes to League of Legends. Because he's able to deal so much damage quickly, he gets a lot of extra gold in his pocket. With it, he's able to scale up much faster than before. His biggest issue before was that it would take him simply too long to scale up and become a threat, and it wouldn't justify the burden that he puts on his team early on. That said, Victor has significantly climbed the popularity chart since the beginning of Season 11. Maybe it's just because Crown of the Shattered Queen. For his runes, you want to take First Strike, Perfect Timing, Biscuit Delivery, Time Warp Tonic, Shield Bash, Overgrowth, Double Adaptive Force, and your choice of a defensive rune. If you're in a tough matchup, don't be greedy and instead take Armor or MR. Victor scales so hard, so you don't really need to risk it. First item, Build Crown of the Shattered Queen, Sorcerer's Shoes, Cosmic Drive, Zhonya's Hourglass, Shadow Flame, and Rabadon's Deathcap. Shadow Flame and Crown are the two new items of the season that are mandatory. The defensive effect of this new mythic item gives Victor a big safety net to work with, while Shadow Flame is a great addition to his burst damage. By the way, for anybody who took a break over the preseason, or for those that just want to quickly improve the season, check out our website ProGuides.com and contact a coach. Last season, our professional coaches helped countless players rank up from silver to gold for those ranked rewards. Regardless of our rank, they can always help you out, and I highly recommend it. Next is Gragas. Although tanks aren't too popular right now, a new build is picking up steam. It's not a full tank Gragas build, but instead finds that perfect balance between full AP and full tank, and he's just got the best of both worlds in it. For your runes, run Grasp of the Undying, Demolish, Conditioning, Overgrowth, Mana Flow Band, Transcendence, Ability Haste, Adaptive Force, and a Defensive Rune. This rune setup focuses mostly on defensive bonuses, which will definitely help you out in the early game. Gragas is a naturally powerful laner with his passive sustain and high damage from both his Q and W. The items are Turbo Chem Tank, Ionian Boots of Lucidity, Thimble Winter, Zhonya's Hourglass, Cosmic Drive, and Shadow Flame. You start the game off with building tank, but once you have the core items out of the way, you can go ahead and start building full AP items. As a result, the enemy carries must respect you. Even with minimal AP, Gragas is a huge threat. That's it for the top lane, make sure to look at the screen one more time for a recap of those builds. Next, let's run through the jungle. In the jungle, our first build is for Karthus. While his play rate wasn't low before Season 12, the introduction of First Strike has also changed things up for him. Typically, players that quickly snowball or who scale well benefit heavily from it. Karthus sort of fits into both categories, but more so on that later. Extra gold means that he'll be hitting his power spikes much faster, and I'm sure that all of us know the terror that is late game Karthus. When he's throwing those lethal skittles out every half a second and his ultimate does a thousand damage, things can definitely get out of hand. Given his Q's short cooldown, he's also able to benefit heavily from the bonus damage window First Strike grants, assuming the player is able to land them. Four runes run First Strike, Perfect Timing, Futures Market, Cosmic Insight, Presence of Mind, Last Stand, Double Adaptive Force, and Armor. With the extra gold from First Strike, losing money borrowing from the shopkeeper won't hurt nearly as much. Run Futures Market so you can go ahead and hit the item power spikes even faster and win crucial team fights with your advantage. For the items, run Leandry's Anguish, Sorcerer's Shoes, Shadow Flame, Zhonya's Hourglass, Rabbidon's Seth Cap, and Cosmic Drive. Shadow Flame is a new powerful item, but it's especially great on Karthus. Since you're usually ulting targets that are already low, you'll be able to use Shadow Flame's bonus penetration to its full potential. Next, we have a build for Jungle Garen. While his low popularity and poor performance have pushed players away, a newer build is finally showing that he's more than a low tier pick. No Garen is scarier than a fast one, and that's why this build utilizes Predator alongside other runes and items to get the job done. With additional movement speed and high damage this build includes, Jungle Garen's ganks becomes much more threatening. I know this sounds troll, but it's pretty fun, so give it a shot. Like any Garen that you see, playing against a fed one is suffering. He just runs at you, silences you, and kills you before you can do anything in response. For the runes run Predator, Cheap Shot, Eyeball Collection, Ingenious Hunter, Celerity, Water Walking, Attack Speed, Adaptive Force, and a Defensive Rune. Ingenious Hunter and Predator synergizes really well, lower the cooldown of the rune and take advantage of it more frequently. This build also includes Summoner Ghost which can be used simultaneously with Predator or used as a replacement when it's on cooldown. For the items build Trinity Force, Berserker Screed, Mortal Reminder, Serex Gage, Dead Man's Play, and Guardian Angel. That's it for the jungle builds so take a look at the screen one more time for a quick recap of them. Next, let's talk about the mid lane. 
First up in the mid lane, we have a build for Cho'Gath that's gradually gaining popularity. While Cho'Gath mid does plenty of damage, it's crucial that a player lands their abilities. His two main abilities are not targeted. As a result, it makes sense to invest and take Glacial Augment over an offensive rune. It's more important that you land the abilities in the first place. As of Season 12, the rune also provides some direct combat bonuses as the slowing fields also reduce the damage your allies take. That said, the runes are Glacial Augment, Perfect Timing, Biscuit Delivery, Cosmic Insight, Mana Flow Band, Transcendence, Double Adaptive Force, and a Defensive Rune. Next, the items are Everfrost, Sorcerer's Shoes, Shadow Flame, Demonic Embrace, Zanya's Hourglass, and Gargoyle's Stone Plate. The two new items for the Season 12 to look out for are Shadow Flame and Demonic Embrace. This season, Demonic Embrace has received some changes and converts 2% of bonus health into AP. With Cho'Gath's built-in stack system, you're only going to grow stronger when you successfully execute an enemy with his ultimate. Before moving on, let me ask you our question of the day. What are your goals for Season 12? When a new champion is released, I'm hoping to pick them up and try to become one of the best at them. Let me know your answers in the comments down below and let's continue on with the builds. Next is a new build for Vi. While Vi has been finding plenty of success with Bruiser builds, players that want a riskier but more explosive playstyle can try this Assassin build out in the mid lane instead. First Strike was popularized amongst AD champions over the preseason and accordingly this build utilizes it as well. For the runes run First Strike, Magical Footwear, Futures Market, Cosmic Insight, Sudden Impact, Ingenious Hunter, Attack Speed, Adaptive Force, and a Defensive Rune of Choice. First Strike works well with Vi as she is able to quickly burst down enemies with all her abilities on contact. Items are Eclipse, Defensive Boots, The Collector, Essence Reaver, Infinity Edge, and your choice between Guardian Angel, Mortal Reminder, or Lord Dominic's regards. Obviously, you want a Mortal Reminder if you need the healing reduction, otherwise take one of the other two based on what you think you need. Eclipse's bonus shield, movement speed, and omnivamp are crucial. Since Vi doesn't really have built-in sustain, it's a saving grace to access them, while bonus movement speed often makes all the difference. Those are the mid lane builds, so we'll put them up on the screen one more time for y'all. Moving forward, we have a mid and top lane combo that we want to talk about as well. That combo is Aatrox and Soraka. Just to clarify, it's Aatrox top and Soraka mid. What makes this combo powerful is the endless healing behind an absolute monster. Aatrox becomes nearly unkillable with the assistance of a solo lane Soraka and even against healing reduction, this duo is absurd. This duo also helps bring in some utility in the early game. Soraka can follow her jungler around and Aatrox is usually a solid early to mid game pick by nature. For Aatrox to set up, use the runes, grasp with an undying, demolish, bone plating, revitalize, tenacity, last stand, double adaptive force, and a defensive rune. His items are Divine Sunderer, Defensive Boots, Serex Gauge, Death Stance, Spirit Visage, Guardian Angel. I highly advise not replacing the Spirit Visage for anything in this build. Soraka provides plenty of healing and it increases healing received from all sources. For Soraka's setup, run Summon Airy, Mana Flow Band, Transcendence, Gathering Storm, Taste of Blood, Ultimate Hunter, Attack Speed, Adaptive Force, and a Defensive Rune. Ultimate Hunter proves to be obnoxious to deal with as the game progresses. Having Soraka's powerful ultimate every single time makes it difficult to win against her. Think about it like this, Karthus having his global ultimate often wins a teamfight, and the same is likely true for Soraka as well. Take a final look at the builds, save them, and let's conclude with the bottom lane. We'll begin with the bottom lane with the build for Senna. While she hasn't been doing particularly well over the preseason, a new build has been found. The small adaptation that players are making is that they're now running lethal tempo. In the later stages of the game, the extra range that it grants at max stacks definitely comes in handy. Senna's incredible range, in spite of her low attack speed, makes it very easy to pick up those stacks and keep them. That being said, this build is optimized around a variety of on-hit effects since it is attack speed based. For runes, run Lethal Tempo, Presence of Mind, Legend Alacrity, Cut Down, Biscuit Delivery, Cosmic Insight, Attack Speed, Depth of Force, and a Defensive Rune. For her items, build Kraken Slayer, Boots of Swiftness, Man Immune, Ginsu's Rage Blade, Rapid Fire Cannon, and Guardian Angel. Finally, we have a build for Zyra. Not a significant change, but definitely one noting. Players have started running Glacial Augment on her. No, not only for her high damage, Zyra is an incredible backline peeler. Her ability to protect her teammates, slow down fights, and control pockets of space makes her an adept teamfighter. Now that Glacial Augment reduces damage done to allies, she can better fill in the shoes of a support without really sacrificing that much damage. Let's be real, Zyra's support somehow outdamages her other teammates in plenty of fights. Fur runes run Glacial Augment, Magical Footwear, Futures Market, Cosmic Insight, Mana Flow Band, Scorch, Double Adaptive Force, and a Defensive Rune. Her items are Spell Thieves Edge Start, Leandri's Anguish, Sorcerer's Shoes, Zanya's Hourglass, Morello Nomicon, and Demonic Embrace. Leandri's and Demonic Embrace add a significant amount of bonus damage over time, which contributes to her high teamfight DPS. That concludes the bottom lane build, so take a look at the screen one more time for a recap of them. 
With those builds covered, we finish our Korean builds for patch 12.1. Hope you guys enjoy the video. Feel free to share your thoughts down in the comments below. Also, make sure to take a look at the description to join our Discord community. Expect to see some future giveaways and events with the new year and new season underway. Best of luck this season, Summoners, and you guys know the drill. Stay safe, stay healthy, and have a wonderful day. Peace.